gay influenced the growth of camping? Um, that's a hard one to answer. Um, I suspect RCA was one of the pillars down there and kept Camden from completely disintegrating. Um, most of the people that I knew lived outside of Camden. They lived in Camden and Burlington counties and Gloucester County. I don't think many of them actually lived in Camden, but I think it, it brought money into Camden, kept the businesses in, in Camden alive, and uh, it was a it was a loss to to uh, to lose RCA in Camden, even though some part of it is still there in the form of L3 Communications, I think it's called now, and. Um, I think that's had a big influence because it's helped redevelop the uh, the area down there. So. How long did you work at RCA? Well, I think I think it was a total of about thirty-seven years, and, and uh, I worked roughly half my time in Camden and half the time in Morristown. found both fascinating and, and what was what I enjoyed doing. What prompted the switch to Morristown? Uh, the the uh, computer division, which I was working in in Camden, uh, decided to move to West, well my group went to West Palm Beach. Uh, they, and the other part of it went to uh, Massachusetts. And I decided to stay in the Philadelphia area. So I got, I was, about that time, Aegis was, was going into Moorestown. So I got a job out there working in, in Aegis. Rather than move to West Palm Beach, I went to Moorestown. Why did you leave RCA? Retirement. Well, actually RCA left me. <laughs> I like to say, I like to say Jack Welch liked my work so much he bought the company. <laughs> uh, but as you know, in, I think it was 86, GE bought RCA, Lock, Stock, and Barrel. And so then, then in, oh, I guess it was uh, 92 or 90, yeah, 92 apparently, GE had decided to sell Morristown, where I was working, to um, to Mark Marietta, and I said, "Do I want to go through another change?" And I was I was 60 at that time, so I said, "I'll, I'll just take a early retirement and leave." They were offering packages at the time, so that's the reason retirement. Can you describe how you felt? Um, when RCA closed and GE took over? Shocked. Um, I think RCA was a great company. I think it was a, a, a great technical company. Uh, it had a lot of developments. Some were very good color television. Um, some were complete mistakes like the uh, video disc, uh, but it was a great technical company. Uh, it's, I really, I, I miss that, I miss, you know, miss that thing. GE was a little bit of more focused on making a product and getting it out the door. And, but RCA had a, uh, well, we used to get announcements over the loudspeaker system, RCA family members. And apparently, uh, David Sarnoff, who was the chief of RCA, or the chairman of the board at RCA, uh, felt very paternal towards his employees. And he was a, it was a company which sort of looked out after its employees. Uh, 
And it was a shock. It was a disappointment. It was a feeling of being abandoned in some regards. Um, I think it was it was sad. It was a sad day to see RCA. Uh, I used to say uh, RCA was sold to GE for two point uh, two pi billion dollars, six point two eight billion dollars, and uh, I think it was vastly underpriced. I think it was worth a lot more than that, but that's my opinion. Because um, I think NBC was worth that in itself. But I, um, I think it was, it was a loss to the country and to uh, the employees. That's... What did you enjoy about working at RCA? I enjoyed the opportunity to develop unique things, uh, to be involved in the cutting edge of a lot of uh, technology, and to sort of be right out on the on the front of things. And um, as I say, they were a great technology company. I got to develop a lot of one-of-a-kind type things, or if not one-of-a-kind, very limited production. And, and I like to figure out uh, what's the cause of things, what, how to fix something. Um, and I enjoy finding out what was wrong and being able to fix it. Well, that's the end of our interview okay. questions. Okay. Um, before I turn off the recorders, is there anything else you'd like to share about your experiences at RCA? Well, like I say, I enjoyed fixing things. And I'll give you a, one example of something that happened in Moorestown, uh, where we're working on the Aegis system. And uh, I'm very proud of that I found it out. We were having a problem with a signal processor, which was, uh, we would, they would put a module in and the thing would work initially and then it stopped working. They'd take the module out and send it down for testing and it would be fine. And then they'd put another module in and it'd do the same thing. So uh, I was one of the several people who were trying to figure out what was wrong. And I just happened to think that the wire connecting this module, the output of this module, was running about eight feet down to the end where it was going. And I thought, boy, that's a, that's a long distance. So I got to looking at it, and what was happening was the signal was going down, and it was reflecting off the other end and going back and resetting the module up here. So a very simple fix, just put a little buffer in between and it stopped it. So that was, that was a real, I was really, I was really impressed with myself on that. <laughs> Can you explain exactly what the Aegis system was? Yeah, it's a radar system. It's uh, for, uh, well, it's put on destroyer, it's cruisers at first and destroyers. Don't ask me why cruisers, um, well, it was because of the weight of the system, I think. They had to make the ship bigger, and according to the way the Navy does ships, it's, they had to put it on a bigger ship. But it's a radar system that's electronic, electronically guided. I'm sure most people have seen pictures of radars that turn around and around and around. Well, this is strictly, the radar beam is steered electronically rather than uh, with, uh, with uh, a beam, a rotating uh, device. And, and it, so it can move that, that beam very, very quickly. And then it's attached, the signals come back from the radar and they're processed. And if they detect a target, um, they can guide the 
equipment, the guns and, and missiles to go towards the, uh, to attack the incoming target. And so it's a very, very sophisticated system. And I, it's a it's a wonderful thing. I don't do not understand the whole thing. I'm just giving you the uh, sort of the thumbnail sketch of it. But it's it's a great it's a great system. I think uh, it should be employed in things like our uh, um, you know for for our commercial aircraft and even I think. It, I think it has been employed uh, for uh, anti-ballistic missile things, and uh, it's a it's a real beginning to do that and give us a shield against other people shooting. At